Hey guys, so Scott here. I want to do a video where I don't have to do any editing because I have a lot of, uh, not a lot of spare time and I wanted to get this out because we were talking about this today. But before we talk about the expat immigrant question that just came up from CN. I7105, it's hard to read. Um, <clears throat> I want to just make a quick announcement that we do have the live stream is going to be on today. This is Thursday. If you're getting this, I'm releasing this on the same day. Uh, so about two and a half hours from the time this goes live, we're going to be doing the live stream this evening because it is Thursday. I am back. We're going to do that. So plan for that. Tune in for the live stream. That would be awesome. Also, check out the member thing. We can talk about it on the show. We talked about it last week that we're planning on it. It's there now. We can talk about ideas. You can give your feedback and find out more about it if that's something you're interested in. Show up. Of course, get down there and ask your questions. Uh, and there is going to be a real episode today. This is an early one. The main one will come out really late, I believe. That is the... <laughs> a lot of stuff going on today. It's been a very busy day. So I'm not going to read the name again, but he asks... Why call yourself an expat? What makes it any different from an immigrant? Isn't it like calling water H2O? So very importantly, no, they are very different things. I have been an expat for about 12 years. I've been an immigrant for about uh, a few months, uh, right? So they are different things. I have changed category. I am an immigrant, but I'm also an expat. I will always be an expat. That's not something that can really go away. It can, but it requires you to move back to your home country. Then you stop being an expat. Um, and one could argue that if you did that, maybe you never were an expat. I get that, but it's, yeah. Uh, the idea is that it, it has to be with intent. You don't intend to move back. I don't intend to move back. Therefore, I am an expat, but I am also an immigrant. And the immigrant is the, and I don't mean this to be better, but it is the greater of the two, right? If you know someone is an immigrant, you know they're an expat. If you say that they're an expat, you don't know if they're an immigrant. So it, if you're an immigrant, it makes more sense to say immigrant. However, it is common in American English and and in many other places that people use expat in a positive way and immigrant in a negative way, which makes absolutely no sense uh, because an expat in most situations is simply someone who has either been denied or not yet achieved immigration. Um, and so while it, it could be accurate, it's not a positive. Um, and often there are people who don't want to be immigrants. They're expats, but they're just like digital nomads. They don't plan to go back to their home country, but they don't plan to settle permanently in any specific new one. That makes them expats, but not immigrants. Those are important. But we talked about a few things and he, he had a follow-up question or point. He said, so what I get is an expatriate is someone who leaves their home country for some time, but still consider your residency your home country. That would not be the case. It means you don't consider your residency your home country. As long as you consider your residency to be your home country, you're kind of just a tourist, which I mean, that's fine. Nothing wrong with being a tourist, obviously. Uh, but when you're just, um, and I've seen people argue that expats are anyone who leaves their home country for, for even a moment, run over the Canadian border to grab Tim Hortons and run back, you'd be an, an expat while you're there. That I don't agree with, but I understand why people make that point, but I think it's ridiculous. Um, I think if you're on vacation for the weekend or a week or just anything that is clearly a vacation, that is travel and a tourist and you're not an expat, but understand that there is some gray area and people do argue about it. But it's certainly, I've never heard anyone tie it to where your residency is. If your residency is in your home country. So that is something, some Canadians are expats. Uh, no, so this happens everywhere, but Canadians have a, a big problem with this, that they can leave Canada, have no plans to ever return, be 100% expats, and Canada still considers them to be resident in Canada. It doesn't matter, they may be resident in a new country, maybe they moved to Panama and they got uh, residency there and and um, unfortunately, they're still considered um, um, they're still considered to be resident in Canada by Canada, and so you can't use that to say not resident, right? They clearly don't live there. They clearly are not going back. They clearly have moved somewhere else. They're actually immigrants in Panama, but Canada may still consider them to be a resident. So we, we never consider residency in your home country uh, as a uh, decision factor or a factor of any type when considering whether or not you're an expat. I can... Uh, Often people are not familiar with exactly what residency means and who determines it and what it implies. And so there's a, there's a tendency to connect 
residency to a lot of things that don't actually depend on residency, and this is one of them. So from an expat perspective, residency is not a factor, not just your residency in your home country, but all residency. You don't have to have residency, you can have multiple residency. That residency can be a new place, an old place, both or neither, uh, or, or more than those, um, but it, it's never considered. Expat refers to where do you live? Is it outside your home country? Then you are an expat, but it has to be where you live, not just where you're traveling in my personal interpretation. And I think almost all people agree with that when you actually break it down. They just may not say that because they're not thinking of it when they're trying to write. The rules uh, he then says, whereas an immigrant just plainly establishes their place of residency in their new country. That is kind of true. An immigrant is generally considered when you um, have achieved residency uh, or are attempting to and are on the process to. This gets a little bit difficult because if you use residency to mean where you're living, then you would be an immigrant anywhere you visit because you're living there at that time. We generally don't use it that way, but the term illegal immigrant, which is already an arguable term that may not even be possible in reality, but if you're an illegal resident, it means you have an established residency, which means they're not an immigrant, not illegal, right? There's a whole bunch of things. There's also the problem of can you be an illegal immigrant because it's not illegal until after you've immigrated. You have to be a legal immigrant to have done something wrong and then the thing that's illegal is not being an immigrant but existing. And so there's a philosophical argument in multiple directions as to why illegal immigrant isn't a term that makes any sense. What could that possibly mean? How could you define that? Um, <clears throat> and people really struggle with, oh, I don't actually have a definition for it. But aside from that, if you're assuming illegal immigrant and you're assuming that you must establish residency, this still gets a little bit hairy because you can establish residency, and Mexico is a great example, as a Canadian or American or whatever, you can establish residency in uh, Mexico without ever having visited the country, never having lived there, never having spent time there, never having done anything except filing some paperwork. Does that make you an immigrant in Mexico? Uh, from a Mexican perspective, they may legally consider you an immigrant, but from a terminology perspective, you're not an immigrant in Mexico. You're not even in Mexico. You're not, you're not anything, right? But residency can be given to places that you can't uh, that you that you have not been in which no one would consider you to be resident in and you can be stuck with residency in places you are never returning to and don't live in uh, so residency is a very very fuzzy concept especially when you're considering it from other places um, so so we just have to be we have to be clear that yes that is kind of what immigrant means but it's not exactly so the expat part no that's not what it is but the immigrant part close but you got to be you got some caveats and clarifications uh then he says but if you establish your residency outside are you still called an expat because from my point of view there's nothing inherently wrong with being an immigrant which of course there's not being an immigrant can be a great thing i think it's very positive that i'm an immigrant not for anyone in particular not that i'm like some wow he's an immigrant here thank goodness just meaning I've intentionally chosen a country, uh, put in the research, put in the time, put in the effort, gained my immigration status, um, and and are doing so by intentionally choosing the place that's right for me. That's just a, a good process, right? Um, so I think it's generally a positive thing, people making a change. Who would make a change for the worse? You're making a change for the better, right? Nothing wrong with that, so that's a good thing, right? So, but, so his question is, if you establish your residency on CR, are you still considered an expat? Absolutely. Where your residency is, if you have residency, never is considered in the term expat. You have a home country that you cannot redefine, right? So I was born in the United States. If I live outside the United States without planning on returning, I am an expat. No ifs, ands, or buts. I am an expat for life. That cannot be taken away by changing my residency. It cannot be taken away by changing my citizenship. I could get citizenship, in theory, I could get citizenship in Nicaragua, give up my American citizenship. Those are two separate actions. If I did that, would I still be an expat? Absolutely. I was born in the United States. I am still an expat outside the United States. Nothing I can do with any paperwork could ever alter that. It is simply the state of a human living in a place that isn't the place of their birth. Some people are expats without knowing it, spend their whole lives living in places not realizing that they weren't born there. That's a real problem. Um, so that is something that would never change. So expat is permanent. Expat is a status you carry with you. It is a thing about you personally. If you're an expat, you are an expat. But if you are an immigrant, that's really perspective from 
right now for me, I live in Nicaragua. I have permanent residency in Nicaragua. If Nicaragua asks me, am I an immigrant? The answer is yes, I am an immigrant in Nicaragua. From the perspective of Nicaragua, I am an immigrant. From the perspective of the United States, if they ask, am I an immigrant? The answer is no, I'm an emigrant. I had originally lived in the United States. There was a time that I was a, a United States resident. I have moved on to another place. I have emigrated from the United States. So to the United States, I am an emigrant, uh, not an immigrant. If I, they asked, am I an immigrant? And I said, yes, that would be wrong, right? It would be dishonest, not intentionally so, I'm sure, but it would not be correct. Um, now, if I was to go to France and hang out and they said, are you an immigrant? The answer is no. If they said, am I an immigrant? The answer is no. If they said, am I an expat? The answer is yes. I'm an expat who does not live in France, but I am an expat. I do not live in the country of my origin. I am not an immigrant because I didn't leave France. I'm not an immigrant because I didn't move to France. So from France's and everyone else's perspective everywhere in the world, I am an expat. But my immigration and emigration statuses, stati, are, it must be statuses, uh, are unique to the context of the countries that I'm going to or from um, and are not universal. My emigration happens when I become an expat, but my immigration happens in theory only when I'm accepted as able to stay in a particular country. Many people are expats and don't have residency, and so they you can easily be an expat. Many people are expats, but not immigrants. Uh, or they may be wanting to be immigrants, they may be considering becoming immigrants, but you become an expat generally long before you become an immigrant. Normally you become an expat for years of research before the idea of whether or not you want to be an immigrant even comes up. And so in many of the discussions that we're having here, we're talking about expats, not immigrants. The decision of what country do you want to move to? How do you adapt? How do you, like all these things? Those are expat problems 99% of the time. It is an extremely rare situation that you would be becoming an expat and attempting to become an immigrant simultaneously. Of course, some people do, but generally the, the expat happens quite a bit before. And also the expat experience is universal. Even if you're wanting to become an immigrant, you're still an expat. So saying that it's these are the tools for expats would apply to immigrants who want to do it at the same time. They know that they're also expatting at the same time. But it also applies to many people who have no plans or no uh, current process of immigration but are becoming expats. So it is expat skills. That's the commonality uh, and the universality of those topics. So I hope that cleared that up. And if you have any more questions, please jump on the live stream and let's talk about it in real time. That's a great place to have these kind of conversations where we're going to have a back and forth and discuss how all of that works. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you guys in just a couple hours.